Okay, so I want to give you some tips on one of my favorite parts of DocuSign, which is envelopes. Um, sounds like a weird favorite part, but really it's just that there are so many different features within envelopes that you can do. Um, and so I want to make sure that you are aware of all of them. So in the DocuSign Basics video, we talk about um, some of those features, but I want to go a little more in depth. So with envelopes, which is what you use in DocuSign to send documents for signature, um, you have a couple different ways that you can start an envelope. You can either select forms from in here and choose this pen icon to put them in an envelope, which is typically my preference because I find it is just a little bit of a shortcut. You can also go straight to the envelopes tab. So I'm gonna just grab a new form from the DocuSign forms library, the top right, just so that I have one to use as an example that is not um, already signed. So I will grab just this buyer's rep and add it to my room. So in this scenario, I'm going to pretend that I have already filled this out completely, but please remember you do need to fill your documents out within this documents tab. So I'm going to click this checkbox. And again, I can click create envelope or I can go straight to the envelopes tab. I can also right click on the document if I am just doing one document and click create envelope. So you choose what way you prefer and just go with that. So this is generating my envelope for me. And when I get here, a um, couple of these things might be um, repeated from the DocuSign basics, but that is because they are just really important. So first thing is envelope name. At the top, it just says, please DocuSign. We always wanna rename this because over the course of a transaction, you're gonna have a lot of envelopes. And <clears throat> if you've got seven different envelopes and you've got multiple ones active at the time, and maybe you're having an issue with one or you need to resend one to someone, you wanna be able to easily find which one that is and renaming them will help. So if they're all named, please DocuSign, that makes it a little more challenging. So here I'm gonna just name this buyer rep because that's all that's in here right now. Um, and then below that, I can add documents to the envelope. So because I selected the documents within the room, it's already here. If I had gone to the envelopes tab, I would have to choose it from room doc. Now, even if I had forgotten something here, I can click room dots and this will show me all of the documents in the room and I can add any additional ones that I need from here. I can also use a template. If you have any specific templates created for any reason, this is what we use to, create, to um, send lockbox requests and things like that. So that's a scenario where you might be using a, uh, template in an envelope and then more allows me to upload. So if I am uploading from um, my computer, maybe I've got PDFs or something from the other agent and I need to upload that into DocuSign, I can use this upload button right here. I don't have to have necessarily put the PDF in the room at the beginning. Then below that is recipient. So this is this is where the magic happens. And this is what you really need to focus on and um, commit to memory. So when you add recipients, you're gonna have three options. Sometimes you'll only have two. So sometimes you will not see this pre-tagged roles option. Basically, anytime that you're working with just PDFs from the other agent, you will not have pre-tagged roles because pre-tagged roles means that DocuSign has pre-tagged uh, signatures, text boxes, check boxes, things like that for specific roles that are that have to sign the forms. So buyers, sellers, agent, anything like that. So when you see pre-tag roles, you always, always want to use it because if you don't and you get to the next step and you're having to manually add all the signatures, it's going to easily get frustrating. So you should only have to add manually add signatures when you are working with PDFs. So I'm gonna choose pre-tag roles and I'll get a few options. So in this scenario, say I did buyer one and buyer agent, of course you would choose 
whatever pre-tag roles apply to that transaction. And I will be buyer one, and then Lily will be buyer agent. I will add selected. So a <clears throat> couple things about recipients over here. You have these uh, number ones right beside the people to the left. So um, this is signing order within DocuSign. This is super helpful because it allows you to send something for signature and go in a certain order. So if you needed someone to receive it first um, and then someone else to receive it second, someone to receive a copy third, you can enact all that here. So in this scenario, it would be normal for me to send it to both at the same time. But let's pretend this is a form that maybe you do need to kind of go in a certain order. You want someone else to sign before someone else receives it, anything like that. So I'm gonna change that one to a two. And now um, the buyer agent will not receive it to sign until buyer one has signed. Um, if you are gonna add somebody else to this, so an example might be, maybe your client is signing a purchase and sale agreement or a counter offer, and you want it to automatically go to the other agent once it has been signed, um, just for them to receive a copy of it, a PDF, you can do add recipient and you can do, um, in this case, either room participants or email address. So you wouldn't do pre-tagged roles because the person's not signing anything. So there's nothing pre-tagged for them. Um, but room participants, if you had added them to the room, which you don't have to do, um, then you could choose that. And if you hadn't, you could just do email address. So I'm going to do um, just room participants and just grab another role from the room. Um, so I'll select Julie and add that. And then what I would do is I would put her to receive it last. So whatever number last is. And then over on the right, it always defaults needs to sign. But on this one, I'm gonna change this to receives a copy. Now I want you to note, there's multiple roles here. So there is needs to view. This is going to send them a link they have to click on. But what, um, what I have found with most people is that most agents do not wanna click on a link and go into your um, document system. Maybe they use another um, system for their uh, contracts. They don't also use DocuSign, so they don't care about going into DocuSign. They just want a PDF attached. And you may feel the same way being on the opposite end of that when you're receiving them. It's just easier when they send you the PDF and you go and upload it and put all the signatures on it. So, um, and also if you put needs to view, the envelope will never finish until they click on that. So if the agent is like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna open it that way. I'm gonna wait for a PDF and they never click on it. The envelope just kind of stays in limbo. So receives a copy. What it's gonna do is as soon as everyone has completed signing, it's going to send a PDF attached to an email to that person. So it's the easiest way to do that. Um, <clears throat> And then also the more button on any of these, you have where you can add access authentication. So if I clicked that, you could enter in an access code that they have to put in to um, sign the document or receive the document or anything. So if you had anybody who was for some reason, maybe just very hesitant about e-signature, I know that there, there are people that are hesitant about it, um, then you can do this. Of course, you would have to let them know what the, what the code is. Um, but then they would have to enter that to access the document. You also can add a private message to a specific person on the envelope. So that's an option under that more section as well. And um, then if you needed to add anyone else, you could do that. Um, of course, you're always gonna get copies of the documents automatically in your room anyone that's part of the envelope is going to get them as well. So this signing order and adding someone to receive a copy can be helpful with contracts, you know, documents that are signed by, by both parties, mutual releases, say you're waiting on um, everybody to sign the mutual release. And then you know that you need to send it to Julie to disperse the earnest money. Once it is signed by everyone, you could add her to receive a copy of it at the end of the envelope. And then um, she would automatically get that and know that that contract had fallen through. And then below that, of course, you have your email subject. Always recommend changing this 
because um, you want to just be a little more specific. So I like to leave please DocuSign because it shows there is some type of action required for them. Then I like to just put what they're signing because chances are you've let them know that you're sending over a certain document or set of documents. Because remember, you can send one document in an envelope, you can send 10, I mean, um, you can send basically whatever you need. So um, there will be cases where you are just sending one or where you're sending a bunch. So you can also add an email message to them in here as well. This would be a good place if this is a form like a property condition disclosure where they need to fill it out and check boxes or a lead-based paint disclosure where they have to check a box on it, reminding them here that they do need to do that. This would be a good place for that. Um, I also would recommend if when you are sending forms like that, that you also um, just remind them yourself through text message or on the phone, whatever, to let them know that, hey, this is the form that I'm sending that you need to um, fill some things out on or check some boxes because it can be easy for them to just click and sign and bypass that. So once you have done that, you would of course go to next and then send your envelope or signature. You also have actions right here where if you needed to um, duplicate an envelope or delete it, say you um, realize you didn't need this one, then um, you have that as an option as well. So I'll hit next. <clears throat> this will pull up my document here. So of course, We'll pretend this was filled out. Of course, it's not a blank document. Um, I have my roles up here in the top left. So I have myself as um, buyer one and then Lily is buyer agent. So I can toggle between the two of those as well. And um, I have my color code for that. So if I were to go to the last page, which I can scroll here in the middle or I can always scroll on the right and just skip to that last page and I have my two little tabs and then I have my signature boxes here and then my date signed boxes. So um, all of those will be here. If you um, get to this point and you realize maybe you missed something that you needed to fill out, if it's just maybe one little thing, you can use these fields over here on the left. If it's a bunch, I would probably go back to the, um, to the documents tab and complete it there and then redo your envelope just because it would be quicker. Um, so that's why it's important to make sure you fill out the form fully in the documents tab before coming to your envelope. So I do have a video all about working with um, PDFs and using these fields over here on the left for the different roles. Um, but a couple things, if you're adding something for a specific person in here, make sure you have chosen their role. And so you're using their color on here, whether that be for signature, initial, um, if you were ever adding signatures, always add a date signed box with it. So it will not automatically have a timestamp. So you need to always put that beside it when you're working with those PDFs. Um, and then um, if you have something that you need to add that isn't specific to one person, maybe it's a text box and you wanna make sure everybody can see it, you're gonna go on the left to this little pencil icon pre-fill tools. And you could add a text box, a checkbox, radio button, anything like that. And that's gonna make sure that everybody in the envelope sees it. This isn't assigned to any specific person. So say you had just forgotten um, to fill out something on a specific line, you can do that. Um, and over on the right side, you can also change the formatting of text boxes that you add within this section. So you can't change the formatting of the ones by default in the room, but any ones that you are adding, uh, you can change that over here on the left. So you do have options like that. So um, those are just a couple little things that you can do within here. And then a little square um, or rectangle at the top left for standard fields will take you back to your standard um, color coded assigned fields. So um, there is a recipient preview button here if you would like to see what it looks like for the recipient to receive the envelope. You can see in the top middle desktop view, uh, tablet view, and uh, smartphone view. 
So tablet and smartphone view do have mobile friendly options. A lot of people don't really love the mobile friendly ones because you'll notice it doesn't necessarily look like the form and it can get a little bit confusing. Sometimes it also seems like signatures are a little off or in the wrong places or checkboxes are in the wrong places. So I like to toggle that off just so you know if your client is signing it on a mobile device, they have the option uh, once they click to sign it and they're viewing it to turn off the mobile view. So um, they can do that as well. And then here is the phone view. So it can look exactly like the regular document or I can toggle on the mobile friendly view as well. And then in the top left, I can see who I am viewing it as. And then the X will take me back. And then I can click the yellow button to send in the top right or the bottom right. Oh, I need to delete the text box I added. <clears throat> so once you have sent an envelope, a couple things that you'll see, it'll take you to your envelopes tab. You can see the status of it, whether it's waiting for others, needs your signature, um, is completed, anything like that. On the right, you can see when it was last modified. And also right here, you can see how you wanna sort it. So newest envelopes at the top, a to Z, I like to have them most recent at the top because I feel like that's helpful. And I can click on that envelope and a couple things that you can do within an envelope, you can resend. So if someone uh, says that maybe they didn't get the email and um, or they can't find it or they accidentally deleted it, you can tell it to resend. Or if you're waiting on someone to sign it and they still haven't signed something, you can tell it to resend. It will only notify the people that have not signed. So if one person in the envelope had already signed, it will not resend it to them. It will only send it to the ones that we're still waiting on. Correct is going to allow you to make certain corrections. For example, if you realize that they weren't receiving it because you had put their email address in wrong, you can come here and correct that. So you don't have to start over with a new envelope. It will allow you to correct that. And um, it will still allow you to correct it even if they have already started the, um, like if someone else has already signed, um, you can still make a correction to things like their email address um, for the person who hasn't signed yet. So it won't affect the signatures that have already happened. Um, and then more here will allow you to see what documents were in the envelope, make a copy of it, void it if, um, something maybe you they received it and then they realized something was incorrect on there and you needed to redo it um maybe they changed some things within the contract or a name was spelled wrong on a bunch of different places or anything that made it where you needed to resend them anyway and so they weren't going to sign them you can void it this will notify the client that the envelope is voided but the reason it's good to do that is because they cannot click on that and sign anymore. So that way, when you send them the new one, they'll only be able to sign that. They will not be able to do anything with the voided one. And then you can view envelope history. So that is a little bit of envelopes 101. Hopefully that gives you some good tips on using those to your advantage.